All right. Words and more words. I also don't foresee topic. Yeah. Um, a very easy word. Convenient. Yes. What is convenient? Is it a noun? Is it an adjective? Is it a verb? Convenient? Yeah. It's an adjective. What's the noun for it? Convenience. Convenience. Thank you. So convenient and convenience. Now, of course, conven the word convenient has some synonyms, such as it reminds us of the word comfortable, right? And comfort. Now, first of all, let's take a look at this word. You said this class is convenient. What does that mean if you say this class is convenient? Yes. Is it close to your house? Is it easy to come to? No. So the word convenient, when you go, the problem is when you go to your dictionary, it says, oh, like comfortable, like this and that, but that's not the way it is. Uh, for example, if shopping is very convenient for you, it's because all the shops are close to where you live. They're close to your house. If I say, call me when it's convenient for you, I mean, call me whenever it's okay for you, whenever it's easy for you to call me, whenever it's the best time for you. So if a time and a place are convenient, so the, a place that is convenient, it's easily accessible. So if we're talking about a convenient place, we're talking about easy access, easy access. If we're talking about a convenient time, it means that time works for me. It's a good time for me. It's okay for me. So, <coughs> uh, <clears throat> and we also have to inconvenience someone. Convenient? We have inconvenient, right? Yeah. Convenient. What is the opposite of convenient? Inconvenient. So I want to get the, my short man right on. Yeah. So convenient, convenience, yeah. We also have inconvenient. So we have convenient, and the opposite of convenient is inconvenient. Convenience, the opposite is inconvenience. So is Monday convenient for you? Is 6 o'clock convenient for you? That's what convenient means. If you say, well, it's, why did you choose Townwood? Because, or why did you choose, for example, that university? Oh, it was very convenient. If you say it was convenient, the first thing that comes to my mind, it's easy for you to go to that place. Okay? But if you say, like, something is comfortable, like, this chair is very comfortable, like, you know, this couch is very comfortable. Mm -hmm. It's not like I can relax, I'll see it's very comfortable, you know. But convenient is, so, if I say do it whenever, whenever it is convenient for you, it's up to you. Whenever it's, is, is Monday okay? Instead of okay, I can say, is Monday convenient? You can say, uh, it's very formal to say it's inconvenient. 
Because people usually say, look, uh, I'm busy on Monday, can we change it? Can we reschedule? You know, to reschedule. To reschedule. If there's a schedule and you want to change it, you call your teacher, you call, can we reschedule the class? Can we reschedule the meeting? Can we reschedule? Can we change it? I would ask you, instead of saying, is Monday okay for you? If I want to speak more formally, I would say, is Monday convenient for you? So, convenient. Um, this house is very amazing. I would like to, I, I love where I live. The neighborhood is nice, it's a quiet neighborhood. And um, it's so convenient. Shopping is very convenient. It basically means the clothes, uh, the, the, the shops are very close to my, to my place. So, and we have inconvenience to inconvenience. And the interesting thing is the word inconvenience is both a noun and a verb. So if you say sorry for the inconvenience, sorry for the inconvenience. And I want you to learn this. Sorry for the inconvenience. What does that mean? Sorry for the inconvenience. Now, if, you, if I want to say, like, if I text, you want to text me, imagine I'm an English teacher, you text me, look, sorry, I can't make it Wednesday. Can we reschedule a class for Monday, for next Monday? Sorry for the inconvenience. Because you're bothering somebody. It's, uh, you're, so this one is, sorry for the inconvenience. Um, I would write to you and say, sorry, we have to change the place from uh, downtown to a place that's far, it's farther. Sorry for the inconvenience, because it causes you inconvenience. Sorry for any inconvenience that's caused by this, you cause. So that's, I want you to learn this phrase, sorry for the inconvenience. Sorry for the inconvenience, okay? So, to inconvenience someone. Um, I hate to inconvenience you. Inconvenience you, but I don't mean to inconvenience you. Don't mean to inconvenience you or put you out. But I hate to inconvenience you, but we have to change the place. <coughs> I hate to give you trouble, but we have to change the place. I don't want to. I don't want to inconvenience you any further. That's a good sentence. I don't want to inconvenience you any further. I don't want to inconvenience you any further. I don't want to inconvenience you any further. I 
I don't want to put you out. I don't want to give you any more. I don't want to cause any more problems. I don't want to cause any more problems for you. I don't want to put you out. To put someone out. Would it put you out too much? To let her visit you for a couple of hours, trouble or inconvenience you? Would it trouble you? Would it put you out? I don't want to put you out. So if you say, look, thank you, um, somebody says, look, I'll, I'll give you a right. You know, to give somebody a right, I'll come pick you up. I'll give you a right. So look, no, I, no, thank you. I don't want to put you out. So I don't want to put you out to put somebody out. Where did I write it? To put someone out. I don't want to put you out. These are phrasal verbs, right? So I don't want to put you out. I don't want to cause any trouble. I don't want to inconvenience you. No, thank you very much. I'll do it myself. I don't want to inconvenience you. So it's different from comfortable and comfort. And I will talk about comfortable comfort a little bit right after this. But so we know that do it whenever do it. You want to say please do it whenever whenever is convenient for you. Convenient for you. Whenever. You know, whenever, wherever, whoever, whatever. Yeah? Do it whenever is convenient for you. Now, do you still say this class is convenient? It's, we have convenience store. Why convenience store? You know, convenience store? Because everything you want is there. Why do we call it a convenience store? It's close to your house. A convenience store. It's like a supermarket that's close to my house. And it has everything. Everything I want. That's why it's a convenience store. It has a lot of things. And it's close to my house. So it's a convenience store. I go to a convenience store. We call it a convenience store. So, do it whenever it's convenient for you. Now, there's one phrase that's very good. So remember, convenient, convenience, to inconvenience, sorry for the inconvenience, sorry for the trouble. So if you say sorry for the inconvenience, you can also say sorry for the trouble. So more informally, and people usually say sorry for the trouble. But could you um, do me a favor and do this? Could you do me a favor? We know that. Sorry for the inconvenience. You change the time, please. I don't mean to inconvenience you. I didn't mean to inconvenience you. Now, <coughs> there's a phrase that's very helpful when you're writing emails, or especially when you're writing email. What is that phrase? At your earliest convenience. At your earliest convenience. For example, please respond at your earliest convenience.
Black women say, I'll be most grateful if you kindly uh, send me a copy of your latest for example, it could be uh, something, brochure, whatever, at your earliest convenience. Have you, you know ASAP, right? <coughs> yeah? ASAP. As soon as possible. Yeah? But as soon as possible is not formal, say ASAP. And it's usually the boss would write to you, do this ASAP. Do it as fast as possible. Or you can write it to your friend. Or put it in the subject section to make sure that it's uh, very important. So, ASAP is as soon as possible, right? As soon as possible. Yeah, this one is as soon as possible, just more polite, more formal, and better. <clears throat> Much better. You want somebody to do something at your earliest convenience. Yeah? Say at your earliest convenience. At your earliest convenience. Mm -hmm. You can use it in all emails. It's a very useful phrase. If today you came to school just to learn one phrase at your earliest convenience, that day is worth it. Because you can use this phrase in any email to anyone. Another very useful email phrase, and one day we will talk about email language and what is good for emails, is I'll be most grateful if. I'll be most grateful if you kindly. Anytime you have a formal request in an email, this line works. Always. You're thanking the person because you want them to do something for you. I'll be most grateful if you kindly do something. You know, in emails, we can say please do something or kindly do something. And speaking of email language, uh, one day we'll talk about emails, but you can also say please find attached, please find attached anything because you usually attach a file for somebody right it could be a resume it could be your anything a letter an excel sheet a video anything now you want to say that I have attached this we don't usually say I have attached two files for you if you want go no Download it. No. Please find attached. Please find attached uh, the requested, for example, document. Please find, find attached a copy of my resume. A copy of my resume. You don't need this for here, 
This is when you want to ask a re you want to request somebody to do something for you. You want somebody to change something for you, to send you a product, to, to do something for you. So I'll be most grateful if you could kindly arrange for a face-to-face -face interview so that I can meet you and I'll be most grateful if you if you kindly send a copy of your latest uh, brochure, magazine. Catalog. Hmm? Late, latest price list. So I'll be most. But here, please find attached a copy. Now, the word that's at your earliest convenience, remember this, always remember this, at your earliest convenience, at your earliest convenience. Very essential. I'll be most grateful if you kindly, I'll be most grateful if you kindly. You can use it in any context. In, in, please find attached something. Okay. So you don't usually write, it's not good, it's not good or polite to write to a person, please do that as soon as possible. It's like an order. So a boss or a manager would write it to the person who is lower. But a person who's lower would never write to the boss or the manager or someone who's in a higher position, please do something as soon as possible. Now, um, So we had the word comfortable. And comfort. And we also have, this is a noun. To comfort is a verb. Comfort zone. Comfort zone. Comfy. Comfy, cushy. Just want to make sure the spelling is correct. <coughs> so what is comfy? So comfy, <coughs> like we have comfy cushion, um, whenever it's comfortable for you. But I feel so comfortable here. If I say, make yourself comfortable. Make yourself at home. I can say, uh, just make yourself, make yourself comfortable. Make yourself at home. If you feel very comfortable here, and remember, it's comfortable or comfortable. Both are correct. But people usually say comfortable. So like this part, is like not pronounced, silent, comfortable, comfortable, oh it's very comfortable for me. You can also say comfortable, some people say comfortable, but it's easy to say comfortable. Hmm? A comfortable chair, a comfortable sofa, a comfortable, make yourself comfortable, make yourself at home. I feel so comfortable here, everybody's so friendly, and I love the atmosphere, so I feel very comfortable. There's no pressure. There's no stress. I feel so comfortable. Make yourself comfortable. 
make yourself at home. Yeah. So make yourself comfortable. We have other words for like that. It's time to. It's the same. Make yourself comfortable. It's it's time to relax. Huh? To relax. And what is the noun? Relaxation. It's time to relax and calm down and relax. You know, to calm down. To calm down. And relax. When you're a little bit uh, agitated and nervous, and I would say, hey, calm down, chill out. You know, calm down, chill out. But these are very informal, right? Hey, chill out. Chill out, man. Chill out. Calm down. Easy, boy. Easy. Calm down, relax. Make yourself comfortable. Catch your breath. Take a deep breath. Huh? Take a deep breath. You know, comfort zone? When, that, when you are in the comfort zone of your house, or a comfort zone is an area or a field where you feel comfortable with. For example, if you say, you know, I, some people like to stay in their comfort zone. If, if they're comfortable doing something, you say, I'm comfortable um, going to school and studying and doing this and that. I'm not comfortable going outside, finding a job like that and working in a restaurant. So, so some people like to stay in their comfort zone. They don't like to leave their comfort zone. It's my, the area where I feel comfortable. Some people are more adventurous and they leave their comfort zone. So it depends. All right. But when you comfort someone as a verb, somebody's sad and upset and disappointed and I would comfort that person. Uh, hey, it's okay, it's not the end of the world, things will definitely get better, you need to stay hopeful. I'm comforting that person. So you would say she's very friendly and comforting and, you know. So, if something is comfy, means comfortable. Oh, this place is very comfy. It's a cliche that they say, I feel Kay used it the other day. I feel as snug as a bug in a rock. Or this place is as snug as a bug in a rock. As snug as a bug in a rock. As snug as a bug in a rock. You know, there's a rock. You know, a rock is like carpet on the floor. There's a rock. So if this is a rock, inside the rock, there are some bugs, right? And the bugs are happy because you can't see them and they're lying comfortably and very snugly in the rock. So when a place is so comfortable, you say, ah, oh, it feels as snug as a bug in a rock, or I feel as I feel as snug as a bug in a rock. <coughs> Sorry for the cough bits. So <clears throat> I feel as snug as a bug in a rock. It's uh, it's a cliche. It's an old cliche. Everyone knows it. And people sometimes don't use it very often, but if you ever hear it, snug as a bug in a rock, it's using cartoons for kids. Yeah. <clears throat> so calm down and relax. This place is very comfy. Oh, I like my, this is very comfy cushy. 
when you touch something and it's very comfortable, like, like a comfortable like a cushion, you know cushions like a small pillow? Comfy cushy. So if so, oh, this place is very comfy cushy, I like it. You sit in your car, I love the seat of my car, it's very comfy cushy. Okay. Now what is the next word? Core. What is core? C O R E. Let me put the word core here. And give me some ideas what the word core is all about. Core. Hmm? Core? If it's the core of a fruit, if it's the core of earth, for example, if this is our planet Earth, there's a core here. In the, exactly in the center, there's a core. If this is in, if this is the a peach, the fruit, there's a core. If the core is like they're very small, that's not a core. Like apples, they have small seeds that are called pips or seeds. Like orange has uh, pips. But that's the core. Now, core issues. So core as a noun and core as, uh, as adjective, sorry. As adjective. Some core issues. So core issues are important, necessary, essential issues. Very important, central. Some core issues, and I'll only give you a couple of examples from here, from Longman. So core is adjective, a core subjects, core curriculum. So in, uh, in school, if you go to university or college, we have some core, core curriculum. You know, curriculum is what you have to study, right? All the schedule curriculum, right? The core curriculum. And then you have some electives. Electives. Electives are the courses that are optional. You know, the core curriculum is something that you have to study. It's not optional. You have to. When you go to school, you study, for example, business and accounting. You have a core curriculum. You have to study these books. You have to study these courses. And then you have some electives that you can elect, to, you can choose. It's optional. So we have elective curriculum and core curriculum. So core curriculum is something you have to do. Core beliefs, core values, those things are very important. Core issues. It's okay. So the word core. Critical. That's a good word. Critical. What does critical mean? You know, first we have, yes, critical, the critical condition, critical issues. Now, we'll look at critical. So critical could mean very important, uh, or also, what is CCU in a hospital? Critical care units, right? And we have ICU, that's intensive care units, right? So if it's critical care, if somebody's wounded and is in critical condition, so, so to be in critical condition, it means it's serious injury and the patient may even die. So if somebody's in critical condition, they say, um, 
patient is in critical condition, so he got an accident, he's now in hospital and he's in critical condition, Critical condition or in a con critical condition? <coughs> so, the patient, the patient is in a critical condition. So, if it's if a patient is in a critical condition, he may die, but because it's very serious, here it's a, it's a serious condition. It's nothing minor. But critical issues are critical issues are important, right? It's a very critical issue that we should deal with. It's a very important issue. It's a critical matter. It means it's it's critical for or critical to us. It is very critical to us. It is of critical importance. So critical issues and critical matters are important issues, important matters. If you say this issue, this matter, this issue is of critical importance, like if you're ever writing a test, and if you say something is of critical importance, instead of saying important, it means that thing is very important, is essential. So, a few words, important, essential, vital, and indispensable. You know, indispensable. So, something could be very important. It could be very, it's very critical. It is very critical that we understand. So we have critical, and we also have another word that's crucial. Very close. Crucial. It is crucial to understand that it is critical to understand that. Crucial, crucial issues, crucial matters. Look, when you're writing for a test, you must use these words. Because if you know just one word, important, 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 you need some synonyms and better synonyms. So it is crucial to understand. It is important to understand. It is essential to understand. It is vital. Vital means very necessary. And right after the word uh, critical, I'll go to the word necessary because it's, it is necessary to know the word necessary. Vital. Indispensable. If something is indispensable, it is so important that you cannot do without that thing. If I say I can't, 
I can't do without John. I can't do without you. It means it basically means that it's impossible to do something without that person. Human beings cannot do without water. So water is vital and indispensable. Water is vital. Water is vital. So vital means it's important it's necessary for the life of something. That's how necessary it is. Essential, vital, necessary. Important, critical, crucial. It's of crucial importance, of critical or crucial importance. This subject, this matter, this subject, this issue, this subject is of critical importance, is crucial, of crucial importance. It is essential, it is vital. John Darby is an indispensable, indispensable, and irreplaceable. If something is irreplaceable, it means you cannot replace it. Yes? If someone is irreplaceable, you can't replace that person, can you? If you are irreplaceable, nobody can replace you. You are unique, only one. Indispensable, if you're indispensable. Now, there is something in English we say nobody is indispensable. There's an expression. Nobody is indispensable. Nobody is indispensable. Nobody is indispensable. What does that mean? It means everyone can be replaced. Now, some people believe in this. Some people believe that um, now everybody can be replaced. Every manager, every some people believe no. Individuals are not replaceable. Some people believe there's only one Kirk, and he can't be replaced. Someone new may come, not bad, but it's never Kirk. But from a business point of view, those people who are very business-minded, they believe no. That's bullshit, nonsense. Everybody's replaceable. Darby's replaceable, Kirk is replaceable, Jackson's replaceable, Ray is replaceable, John is replaceable. Hmm? So that, that's why if you're very business minded, you look at people like machines. In the corporate world, the corporate world teaches you to think like that. To look at people as tools and machines. But at the same time, some machines are better than other machines. So you may like to keep the better machines the corporate world. Right, so, have you heard about the survival of the fittest? The 
the I, I will add words because I want to write about the critical here. Survival of the fittest. This was, uh, do you know Charles Darwin? Charles Darwin. He said animals evolve. Only those animals that were more fit survived. The rest died and perished. So, in usually very competitive business uh, situations where people have to compete and compete and compete and compete, only the stronger ones survive. And people say it's the survival of the fittest. The survival of the fittest. Survival of the fittest. Only the fittest survive, unfortunately. Now, I want to get back to the word critical and criticism and critic and critique. So, you say something is of critical importance. It is crucial to know that. It's crucial, critical. Crucial. So, crucial. Now, I want to say goodbye to Charles Darwin and start once again with critical. So, we have criticism. What is a verb? <coughs> Z is American. S is, I think, British. Critic. Like film critics. A literary critic. Literary critic. Critical review. But it's different from critique. Both noun and verb. We usually criticize people to take criticism. Now, it's not easy. It's not easy to to take criticism, right? Is it easy for you to take criticism? Do you take criticism well? Do you accept criticism? Do you accept? Do you accept criticism? Are you receptive to genuine Constructive criticism. Are you receptive? Rece if you're receptive to, it means you receive. Do you welcome? Do you welcome? Do you welcome genuine constructive? What does genuine mean? Genuine means honest and true, authentic, honest and true. 
is genuine. A genuine friendship is a true friendship. Yeah? We have genuine friendship. Asako, do you welcome criticism? Or no? Are you a person who takes criticism well and is receptive to criticism? Some people are receptive to criticism. They're okay with criticism. If you criticize them, they can, they can take it. Some people cannot take criticism. They don't like criticism. They don't welcome criticism. Now, if somebody says, criticism is welcome. Now, as a teacher, you should be open and receptive to criticism. So, open, open, open to criticism. You should welcome criticism. Students must be able to criticize you. Students must be able to tell a teacher, look, uh, we have problems with this part of your teaching. Some teachers are not open to criticism. Not open to criticism. They can't take criticism. Can you take a joke? To take a joke. He can't take a joke. He can't take a joke. Or he, can't, he doesn't take jokes. You can't take a joke. If you can't take a joke, it means people should not joke around with you. You're very serious and you don't like jokes. Yeah. I can't take a joke. I don't like jokes. I say no, I don't like jokes. I don't like jokes. You definitely have friends who can take jokes and friends who cannot take jokes. Yeah? Marco, do you take jokes or no? I take jokes. Do you take, can you take a joke? So you have the capacity. Some people know. You can't joke around with them. I say don't to joke around with someone, yeah? Joke around with someone. You can't joke around with them. They can't take jokes. Criticism. Some people are open to criticism. Some people are not open to criticism. Some governments are open to criticism. Some governments are not open to criticism. Now, democratic governments should be open to criticism. People should be able to criticize their government. Dictatorial governments are not open to criticism. Nobody has the right to criticize them. The king is beyond reproach. You cannot criticize the king. Now, criticism. Say criticism. 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 Yeah. Can you take criticism? So to criticize and criticism. Yeah. Now, critic. Who is a critic? A critic as a noun. Who is a film critic? Who is a literary critic? A film critic is somebody who looks at a film to criticize it. But a better word for criticize here is because I'm not just criticizing my friend. This is more analytical. The analysis is deeper. So that person is critiquing the movie. Critique. 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 So when you write a detailed critique, Please write a detailed, detailed critique. Critique. Yeah? If you critique someone, a critique someone, it's more analytical. More analytical. 
political than so it's a deep analysis, you know, analysis, analysis, yeah? It's a deeper, and deeply analytical, it's a deep analysis. So when you write a critical review, a critical review, Critique. You arrive at a detailed critique after watching a movie. You critique the movie. You critique somebody's character. You criticize, but it's more analytical. Yeah? Okay. A critic writes a review. Sometimes for products, you buy a product, you write a review. Oh, this product sucks. Or this product is very good because of this and that and that and that. So, writing a review. Genuine. Say genuine. 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 Genuine friendship. Genuine feelings. If something is genuine, it's real and authentic. It could be a genuine gold watch, not fake. So, genuine, not fake. Authentic. Now, authentic itself is another word that we should look at. Authentic. So, are you open to criticism? Authentic. Which is the opposite of fake. Authentic documents. Authenticity. To authenticate. Authentication. Authentic means genuine. Like a genuine gold watch. A genuine Swiss gold watch. Swiss gold watch. It's genuine. But we don't say authentic for watch. But you can say your documents are authentic. If you want to go to university here, so you should you say that I completed my bachelor's degree in Japan. So I have my degree from Japan, my bachelor's. Now you should send your documents here to an agency, to a place, and what do they do? They look at your documents. Are they original? 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 And authentic? Are they authentic? Are they real, genuine? Authentic? Or are they fake? Did you falsify? To falsify. Falsify. He falsified, uh, falsified his passport. Or passport. He falsified uh, is a passport. You know, falsify, falsify. What do you do if you falsify your passport? You change your name, you change the date. You know, somebody else gets a passport that belongs to someone else. They change the name to some someone else. It's a false passport. A false passport.